Welcome to the New Grounds Podcast. Today's episode hosted by Real Faction and Goodell. Hello. Actually, this is Will KMR. Uh, I'm just joking. It's Real Faction. <laughs> I, I, the announcer's not lying, it's really me. Um, and today, <laughs> we're here on the Newgrounds podcast with Lewis and Bomb Tunes. Oh man, and also known as Pesto Force, by the way. How is everyone? Um, right. <laughs> I'm great. I'm happy to be here, guys. Excited to be on the podcast with you. Excited to reunite <laughs> with Lewis over another joint adventure. Yeah, it's been a while. Uh, I'm Goodell, I'm here as well. So as Real Faction said, we're joined by Lewis and Bomb Tunes today. Is it Bomb Tunes? Is that how you say it? I was going to ask you that. Yeah, that sounds good. It's is it not? I mean, that's how, how I've always said it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Cool. So let's get this interview started, shall we? Newgrounds. What is it? What What is it? Um, Dolores, you want to answer that first? <laughs> it's everything by everyone, whatever that means. When I first started on go- going on Newgrounds, it was uh, a shameful porn site. <laughs> and it still <laughs> is to this day. <laughs> No, it's a sophisticated. Well, in the shadows. Actually, you know what? I just realized it, that's becoming more prominent again. The Tumblr Exodus. Yeah, oh, yeah. and and yeah. and the 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 Newgrounds artists and the and the, and the porn's been pretty proficient lately in the making rounds on their front page. Very high quality. Yeah, Tom's happy about that. I'm sure. Oh, he loves it. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. y'all been on Newgrounds for a really long time, both of you. Long time. And so we kind of want to hear a little bit about your experience, you know, over over the years as a as the website's changed and evolved, as the community's changed, kind of what. Uh, what your thought process have been and also how how you've changed obviously you know you've both grown as people over over the the time that you've spent on Newgrounds. so uh i guess i guess overall sure. like what's what are what are some of your overall thoughts about your experience on Newgrounds from one to ten <laughs> Uh, I'll I'll start this one if that's okay, Lewis. Sure. So for me, uh, Newground started when I was going through it for like I ran into it when I was going through a kind of creative um, spurt in my life. I was trying to learn how to make video games, and Flash was big at the time. I was trying to learn how to make Flash, and I was actually the name Bomb Tunes comes from the bomb, and Bomb Tunes comes from Book of Mormon. I was a pretty active member in the LDS faith, um, the Mormon faith. And so I was making video games that had stories from the Book of Mormon <laughs> and from Mormon culture. Yeah. So that's where the bomb comes from in Bomb Tunes. That makes so much sense now. Oh. Yeah. So a lot of my old stuff, you'll see there's like characters from the from the Book of Mormon, like Nephi and Gideon and a whole bunch of different stuff. But as I've gotten older, I've kind of, especially more recently, redefined my relationship with that faith. And I'm not quite as true blue of a believer. And partially related to that is my splitting off into the the name pesto force just detaching myself from doing uh mormon related content the problem with that though has been that more people know me by bomb tunes and it's been hard to like get like any sort of support behind the pesto force name um so there's a bit of like content under the bomb tunes name and i still on Newgrounds, i've been posting like news posts and stuff under under bomb tunes just because more people are aware of that name but pesto force is my official website i did super chibi night under the pestle force name but anyway yeah so that's how i started as i was making mormon related video games bomb tunes was a website with mormon games and i was posting stuff on newgrounds and i was just amazed at, at uh, how many views it was getting like to me it was like getting feedback on what i was making even though a lot of times it was harsh it was still fairly constructive and that was just like addicting to me to have to know that eyeballs were looking at stuff that i was making and so then i just kept posting stuff and then i think my first game that got front paged was sheep go to heaven where there's like sheep and goats crossing the screen and you have to like switch back and forth between sending them to heaven or hell Uh, (laughs) brutal uh, and if you if you send them to hell there's like this animation i like traced the uh, metal slug animation in vectors and flash for when you send send a goat to hell i was like really obsessed with explosion animations at the time and uh, and it played in the background it plays the cake song uh, sheep go to heaven (laughs) while you're 
that's like the, the theme music uh that was my first game to get front page and it got so many views and it was like a couple thousand or whatever but i was like hooked at that point i was like too many people are are looking at this stuff i'm gonna keep posting everything i have <laughs> on newgrounds and back in the day they had like an animation that was in the portal that showed like this portal spinning and then like all these swf files like flowing into it i remember that basically since then anything that i've made has flown into the portal so after she'd go to heaven, I eventually published some other stuff that got front paged. And then with Nephi's adventure, it's a point and click adventure starring Nephi from the Book of Mormon. That was a turning point for me because it was like Tom Fulp reached out to me and asked if he could sponsor it after I posted it in the portal, if he could put the Newgrounds logo in it and like pay me for it. And I was like, dude, uh, you mean there's like money <laughs> available <laughs> in doing this? I was already like committed to posting everything, but uh, that was another yeah. like ratchet up in my seriousness and intensity with doing flash stuff and from there i i was just like all my spare time was doing uh independent stuff and i went through a phase shortly after that like 2006 2007 uh, all the way up through uh probably 2010 2011 where i was doing tons of collabs just i teamed up with uh <laughs> i'm gonna name drop here tyler glale afro ninja uh raj from i mockery we did a lot of stuff together um also pox power was our the artist yeah that. i remember them and uh of course me and lewis got together somebody that has kind of fallen off the newgrounds radar as much was ansel oh yeah he was an amazing artist um he and i teamed up uh, for a, a few things he actually helped a little bit with super chibi night but our biggest game was buccaneer battle there's the site called max games like a competitor to newgrounds back in the day i remember that one yeah yeah they had like a big competition where when there were still like huge dollar amounts involved in sponsoring flash games they had a competition and ansel had teamed up with someone to make a game and there his partner dropped out and he came to me and was like we basically the deadline's in a week i have all this art uh, will you program it and i was like sure <laughs> wow so we banged out buccaneer battle in a week and then we ended up winning the the max games competition which was crazy yeah and then a lot of my stuff and i have to say honestly my favorite person to work with has been lewis that's why i suggested that he come Aww. on this podcast is uh <laughs> There's, I don't know if Lewis will agree with this, but I feel that we have like a certain kind of synergy working together where it's, there's no conflict. We just spitball ideas and we like naturally like come to conclusions on what's going to work best and what's going to be most fun. And yeah, it just feels true. very natural. I kind of want to comment on that actually. And I don't know if either of you really remember this, but as far, as far as I can tell, the first time you met was in 2007, which was uh, right, right around the big uh, Newgrounds redesign where they, you know, opened up the user blogs and stuff like that and both of you yeah. started using it around that time and then you had posted something about i think it was you went to a comic con where there was a newgrounds booth and that's where that's where the two of you met but you had posted something where you'd said that lewis has a real parental vibe <laughs> I'm wondering if either of you either of you remember that and how how you feel about that now yeah basically lewis is my daddy um <laughs> I'm the dad of newgrounds yeah it's true I, and i don't know if you guys remember i'm sure lewis does but when lewis was working with newgrounds during the boom of flash he was he was like the core community guy like he would travel around and organize meetups and like he was the main oh, dude yeah. that was like the face of newgrounds out amongst the users let's talk about some of the work that the two of you have done together maybe start with uh what was the first thing that the two of you did together i know wasn't it wasn't it castle crashing the beard yeah i do think at least looking at my history on newgrounds it looks like castle crashing the beard was the first thing where we were co-authors okay so i have a question about that one when you two come together alone your games and anything you're a part of have really blown up but when you combine your forces like with your collabs you've you've also come up with some really famous and remembered uh newgrounds games so they're they're just popular among the community and very well loved uh, like for pixel day you've made a few entries and uh and there's a few i've liked i'll i'll get back to that one later but um i know a little bit about the history behind this one but for those who don't know why castle crashing tom's beard because it seemed to play like a preview of castle crashers before it came out a year prior and tom had a pretty big beard back then but uh tell us can you tell us the full story behind that game tom basically <laughs> made a commitment that he would not shave his face until castle crashers was released and so castle crashers ended up taking a pretty long time and so his beard <laughs> grew to epic proportions oh, and God. Yeah, we were. I think it was you that pitched that game. Yeah, we. Uh, I think we were working on Pico Blast actually at the time, um, like a larger game, mm -hmm. and we were just chatting and just threw out the like stupid idea. I don't even think I was serious. Like, hey, we should make a game about fighting Tom's beard. Um, 
<laughs> and and Lewis, <laughs> Lewis was like, yeah, sure, why not? And so we actually, I think we made that game in two weeks. Wow. And at first, there was a user named Stephen Coley, um, who's since kind of disappeared, but he, he was involved in a lot of, uh, I worked with him on a bunch of different stuff, and he was involved with me and Lewis also. He, he actually did the Tom's face art didn't he for mm-hmm. that game for cast crush in the beard yep oh yeah. okay he drew that up and he was like real excited about it and and then i think he had something else come up he wasn't able to finish art for it and so uh lewis came on to do all the menu lewis took over basically and and finished everything uh all the castle crushers animations all the menus i think i actually drew the backgrounds in the game the in-game backgrounds but yeah it just it came together well and then we we ended up sending tom a request we just wrote up a list of uh, lines to record. We're like, hey, Tom, would you do the book? <laughs> like, we can't tell you why, but here's a list of, <laughs> of things to record for us. And um, Tom says uh, yes to anything, apparently. So, Yeah. Oh, my God. So I was really surprised. He got them back to us. They're super high quality recordings. <laughs> uh, and then we got Swain to do the voice of the announcer. That's one of the things working between me and Lewis, just like if there's stuff to fill in or needs to be done, like there's no hassle like we just pitch in where we can and that makes it so that you don't get stuck on small stuff waiting for assets or whatever just throw stuff in there a lot of times i'll do placeholders and sometimes the placeholders will end up being final art or (laughs) whatever it it all just comes together like it just works so yeah that was a lot of fun and i didn't at the time i didn't really think of it as like oh we're gonna be like promoting castle crashers but i think it ended up being kind of that for castle crashers like it was a it was something that people could play that were excited about it they could kind of spread the word, got the yeah. uh, advertised the, that Castle Crashers was, was coming soon. It ended up, you know, being good timing, I think, for promotion of, of Castle Crashers. Oh, yeah. And, of course, that's where the Pink Knight was invented. Was That was Lewis's design. And oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah and it that. ended up in the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Eventually, we actually talked to the Behemoth. They At one point, they were encouraging us to put together a version that a version of Castle Crashing the Beard that could be included in Castle Crashers as a mini game. Whoa. But... Uh, we that ended up not panning out, um, but they did end up putting my name and Lewis's name in the credits of Castle Crashers, and then eventually they did the Pink Knight promotion for breast cancer and stuff, and adopted this character officially. And now the Pink Knight is like one of the most popular Castle Crashers. Yeah, it's <laughs> um, actually weird. To see yeah, it. who would have thought? That's my main character. I only play the Pink Knight. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, which I thought that was really awesome. Yeah, it's a it's a really cool story. Like how cool how cool the Behemoth was about embracing like this what could have been deemed as like copyright infringement. They're like, no, you guys are fans. <laughs> like, let's embrace you. Let's let's build off of this. Let's give you credit for yeah, not to- pulling uh pulling what some companies that I won't name have been doing lately. Mm-hmm. So aside from Castle Crash and the Beard, some of your other early works, you'd, you'd mentioned um, there's also Pico Blast, and then earlier today I was playing uh, Portal Defenders for the first time. Mm-hmm. Some of those games seem like they're built on like a, like you had maybe a code base or something that you were kind of porting and, and maybe upgrading between the games. Was that sort of the case where you like just had this pool of assets that you were kind of moving between them, or what was that? Oh, no. Workflow? Oh no, I I never from think scratch that every far. time. <laughs> no, yeah, it's always from uh, it's just... yeah, that's my that's my mo. I, <laughs> I wish I thought ahead more and built engines, uh, but it's all just like coded on the fly. I'm better about things like that now, like the quality of my because remember, like I started out as an artist. I never taken a programming class, and I was just like experimenting with uh, with programming. And so Newgrounds is a history of me learning how to code. I always thought of myself as an artist. Uh, growing up like I went to college for art I was like most likely to be an artist in my high school and uh, just very much into that I didn't get into programming until Newgrounds until I started messing with stuff because like to be honest whenever I would work with programmers I would often be like uh they're just not like making it feel the way that I want it to feel like I had a vision for how this would work and yeah, that's the thing also um working with Nick is easier because he comes from like an art background so it's easier to not over explain when Lewis went on grounds patrol he had suggested that the two of you have unfinished games together. Is that the case? Yeah, I don't know yeah, if you guys want to. Can we continue out. where we left off on that? <laughs> 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 yes, we definitely have unfinished business. And I actually feel bad about it because Lewis has been great about getting me assets. And I've just like, I'm in a phase of life right now where I'm really like struggling to find spare time to dedicate to making games. And so I feel like I kind of left him in the lurch on some stuff. Would you like to publicly apologize right now? Yes, Lewis, I apologize publicly. (laughs) 
one of the curses of like creative work is your standards constantly get higher and higher and expectations of your audience get higher and higher. Like it was real easy to back in Castle Crash and the Beard days to, you know, churn something out in two weeks and have it make a big splash. But yeah. with each successive game, it's like, well, it's got to be better than the last one. It's mm-hmm. got to be more impressive. And so it's like this logarithmic uh, time investment <laughs> that. Yeah. That's oh, yeah. towards not being able to get stuff completed. I do think uh, one of the coolest things about Newgrounds just submitting stuff in general is that it always feels like the first time you submitted something, no matter what it is, it's always like, shit, are people actually going to like this? So you kind of like sit there for a while and then you just wait and wait and wait for, uh, for reviews to come in and then to finally clear judgment and stuff, even for like giant games. Yeah, there's always a huge rush submitting stuff to Newgrounds, just mm-hmm. like at that moment of clicking submit and you're like, this has been secret for weeks or months and now it's going to be live and what are people going to think uh, yep. and people I, are going to try to break it and like, etc yeah one of the times i don't remember what game but when we submitted it lewis was like okay i gotta like i'm gonna be offline for like until tomorrow because i can't like sit here and be obsessed with refreshing new grounds reviews and stuff <laughs> like <laughs> anxiety I'll, I'll be back later like i just gotta let this go for a while <laughs> like get yeah, my take it off your off mind it. relax it's, yeah, it's too stressful. I'm really glad to hear that's not just me because I, I relate to that so much. I do that every single time. Yeah. For me, I'm like, because the first rush of reviews is usually bug reports, which I'm like constantly fixing and patching. Right. Um, I'm like on it for like the first, I'm like shepherding it for the first few hours that it's out there um, just because before it gets on the front page or whatever, you have a chance to um, stress test stuff. So I, I don't get the leisure of doing that. <laughs> Isn't that great too when the first review is zero stars and it's just somebody going, doesn't work. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome. Yeah. Thank you. DOA. Yeah. So yeah, actually, I guess I will mention it. The the thing that we're working on, you heard it here first, is uh, oh. is a an HD version of Castle Crashing the Beard. Oh um, yes, yes. Oh, it's so With weird. The That's modern... like the, one of the first games. I know. <laughs> um, I wasn't expecting that, but I'm really excited about it now. Yeah, that's awesome. It's like a big. Bigger... <laughs> if you made like extra content. <laughs> for, that's... like that's what we're doing little minions that pop out of his beard or something Yeah, it's a different game like it has the same kind of plot but it's everything about it is different so it's like an homage we were planning to release it for the castle crashers 10 year anniversary which has come and gone uh, um so yeah having a deadline was Just not wait for the yeah, <laughs> 20 year anniversary uh, but it's really cool, and it's it's actually pixel art, but like HD pixel art. It's a really cool style. Like that's awesome. Lewis, you know how Lewis has been in getting more into pixel art lately. Yeah, actually, oh, yeah, pixel day. That style that we're using on that game, it's different than my normal pixel art that I do on uh, whatever regular basis nowadays. Oh, it's really time consuming to do that style, actually, but it does look cool. Yeah, well, it's good to try something new. And there'll be there's been like a platform switch. Of course, it's not going to be in Flash. Uh, we were using Game Maker to do it, but I will probably upgrade it to the latest version of GameMaker Studio 2, um, which can publish to all kinds of platforms. Nice. Yeah, you tried it on phone, right? Yeah. Um, oh, cool. I don't know if we'll, it'll end up being mobile or not because it's really kind of uh, gameplay is designed to work with the controller. But uh, and there's also like, we're going to have to at some point talk to the behemoth about it because... No, um, it's like it, an established property. Yeah, it, it would be... It's not the Wild West anymore with one of their first games. <laughs> or maybe they'll be like releasing Castle Crashers 2 when we can hop on. <laughs> yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, that's um, never... I'm, I'm pretty sure they've, they've confirmed that's not happening. Like as much as people have wanted it to me included they've pretty much said we have no plans for that right now and i mean but yet they're going back to like alien hominid for yeah. the new game so i don't know i wouldn't rule it out there's every time i like, maybe look, look at comments on anything behemoth posts that's huge demand for castle crashers too i think they would just want to re maybe use castle crashers in a new like format like new genre mm-hmm. i don't know but i wouldn't totally rule it out the other thing with that too is because it's because it's such a big like cult classic it would be hard to to follow it up or like stressful yeah. to follow it up, you know? That's true. That's true. So it, I think it would be cool, actually, like once we have the HD cast crush in the beard done, would be to like get full behemoth support behind it. And even if it's just as simple as like, you know how when they go around to trade shows, they have their arcade cabinets and they have a bunch of like mini games on those arcade cabinets. Like they have oh yeah from the different games, they have like the all you can quaff and the oh, yeah, that would be cool. back off barbarian. It would be cool to just have a castle crash in the beard cabinet that goes around. Like if that's all that came out of this, that would be amazing. <laughs> I think. That would be awesome. That would be great. But yeah, we, we want to make it anyway, just as a 
tribute to Newgrounds, the Behemoth, and Castle Crashers and our own history. So it'll be and and like I said, it's quite different and it's also multiplayer. So <laughs> oh, hype train, hype train. Now I'm more excited. Okay, so you've told me like three things. Every time I was excited, you made like an excited sandwich. I you had the bread. I was like, all right, that's good enough. You put on the ham. Oh, I'm even more excited. And then you put that special se secret sauce on there. You just put like three different things that excited me about this game. Now I'm I'm fully excited on board for this. Yeah, and there are actually some previews. Like I guess my Twitter account is dead now, but I had posted some screenshots, some animated gifs from uh, the game on my Twitter. Well, everyone, go look at that. My Twitter's gone. Um, <laughs> I deleted it. <laughs> everyone, not go look at that. <laughs> But there might be some retweets. Retweets or something might still have previews of the game. It's pretty cool. I'm proud of it. It's like, I'm actually really excited to get back to finishing it. I've been testing it with controllers and multiple people and it's legit. Nice. I have a, I have a controller on my computer, so I'd be, I'd be, I'm excited to try that on my controller now. You guys will be the first to hear. Actually, you know what? If you guys want to beta test it, join <gasps> the Super Chibi Night Discord server. <laughs> And you will be the first well, to be I'm already invited. there. Invited. <laughs> I'm just I'm I'm just kidding there. But I will I will invite you if you do join Super Chibi Night to be a beta tester. Cool. Well I'm excited for that. Yeah. So moving on from Castle Crash and the Beard, Pico Blast. Yeah, I wish that it was a an engine that we were <laughs> building. Um each one was just a one off, which is part of the charm, I think. And if you talk to like people that have worked with Tom on like his development process for video games, it's kind of similar. Like he it's like a stream of consciousness kind of development where you mm -hmm. go, you test, you go you build you like split off and like maybe introduce like different genres in the middle of the game and it makes for a really cool approach but it's not it's it works well for smaller games um it's harder to have like meet like modern gamers expectations with that kind of flow because you just can't scale to huge you know you can't have a hundred levels like that or else you'd be working on it for a yeah. hundred years well, yeah <laughs> that's something that i was thinking about earlier too when you were talking about getting older and not having so much time to work on stuff or you know needing everything to be better than the last thing i think it's also a larger trend in the way that the internet has changed and the way that people expect content and what people expect to get out of games has changed yeah so it's I like agree. you gotta you gotta meet those expectations now on top of surpassing your your yeah. prior work or anything like that but this this style of development i think has kind of like that it has a different feel like and it's a nostalgic feel for a lot of gamers where there's that kind of care that's been put into like all the nooks mm -hmm. and crannies of, yeah. of the game like it really shows um, it's like the indie vibe that makes me so happy so yeah then we did portal defenders which i think when did that come out that that was shortly i think after. it was 2009 wasn't it, it like was after castle crashers yes. yeah yeah shortly after castle crashers came out we made like a castle crashers style more like uh yeah tilted 2d semi pseudo 3d mm -hmm. i forget what that's called but there's a name for that <laughs> but uh that was in the more castle crasher style and that was that's been I think probably our most popular game on Newgrounds is oh, yeah? Portal Defenders. It was the first game to do achievements on Newgrounds. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's when that Tom was like, let's use this to introduce achievements. And then he uh, brought the badges out. Yep. I, I remember. I was, that was, was awesome. I was also involved with the the first game that had ads on Newgrounds. It was oh, wow. a Trick or Treat Adventure Quest uh, with Raj from iMockery and Pox. Yeah. Um, that was I love the, his stuff too. He makes some pretty cool stuff. Yeah. And if, he's I the guy know, that always screams. Yeah. R Roger does, does amazing work. Um, <laughs> Also, Pox Power is an amazing pixel artist. He's yeah, teamed he's up awesome. actually right now with, with Afro Ninja. They're making yeah. the Soda Dungeon series of games on mobile, uh, which is yeah pretty successful. Yeah, he's really maniacal about his pixel art. Um, like I'm, I would say I'm more of a lazy style. Your pixel art style. You and Bomb Tunes also combining with him and how he was saying that care, that that special care for those old kind of games. I've noticed that a lot with with your pixel games for, for whenever you guys submit the I always look forward to your submissions for pixel day because every year that I've seen you guys submit something it's like it's one of the best and uh, one of my favorite <laughs> one of my favorites I still can't say this without laughing super gonad measure <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> that concept alone was wild and and i've noticed every time you do something you're like how can i raise the bar how can i make this make people lose their minds when they just look at this and i've noticed you've done a really good job of like raising the bar when it comes to controversy and i'm like how did this get away with like a uh what was it a t rating m rating and i'm like how did this how how did this work but it works and and it was it's just like how can we make a fun game, game but also make fun and of it Tom. wasn't just anyone's 
It was Tom. It was Tom and his Conan. How can we yeah, piss off the so guy's much. website that we're going to submit to? Yeah. <laughs> I would have loved insane. to see Tom's reaction to that because honestly, that's still one of my favorite games on Newgrounds. And um, I think it was like SOS. Like, but you guys have contributed a lot. Oh, God. I'm, I'm uh, sorry. I, I had to mention that because out of any of the games that have to be mentioned, that is one of them. You know that Tom voice acted that game, right? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Tom's an idiot. <laughs> so they so here's here's the here's the history. Here's the inside scoop on uh, Super Gonads. Sure, let's go into that. Uh, <laughs> so it actually comes from a game that Tom and Dan Paladin made back in the day. It was uh, called Sack Smash. It's on Newgrounds, one of the first games oh, they made, where it was a Dan okay. Paladin blockhead guy with a giant, giant sack, yeah. sack. And he goes around and and there he has to they're like controls to like control how you're stomping on stuff so that was the inspiration and just like kind of similar to castle crashing the beard where there was an event in tom's life where he was <laughs> growing a beard um there's a <laughs> yeah. there's an event in tom's life where he got a vasectomy <laughs> um <laughs> And so I like that we yeah. use Tom's lifestyle and life uh, chat. Yeah, as, it's basically as like, a way to make a game. Yeah, it's <laughs> so, some people have blogs. Oh my god! Some people have vlogs, and for us, we're making like a glog. It's like game log of Tom's life. <laughs> <laughs> I can just imagine like if you release these games on Steam, and then there's a Steam collection on sale, Tom's Life, the anthology, <laughs> and then you have all these games. Out. Yeah. So he's getting a, a vasectomy. Me and Lewis were chatting. We're like, we should do another game about Tom. Um, oh, that's and, so funny. And and he's like, oh, what about Sack Smash? And I was like, oh, yeah, I've been playing, um, I think, around the time they did the remaster of DuckTales. You know, the, the Uncle Scrooge cane bouncing in the old DuckTales mm -hmm. game? You oh, yeah, yeah, game? yeah. And so we're like, we, we need to make a game that has that mechanic. And so it was just like... <laughs> Syn synergy <laughs> it's kind of a unique concept like i think it could be fleshed out no pun intended to a bigger game where you're bouncing all the time you know i i don't know if i've played a game where that's the case where you're constantly bounce like a platformer where you're constantly bouncing um, on your balls yeah on your <laughs> especially not on your balls uh, but like Tom, Tom's balls must have had a real workout after that. <laughs> yeah. And the uh Welcome to Newgrounds podcast. Here we're talking about Tom Fold's balls today. Yeah. And I like uh the, like when we added the super slam where you can like when you're falling, you can like <laughs> <laughs> increase your speed <laughs> downwards. Uh that was hilarious. And so like for a long time I would just like super slam Tom onto the spikes in the game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're just evil. Uh, yeah, and if you guys haven't played it, the uh, it's a it's a boss battle kind of game, like a lot of the ones that we've made. And the boss is named Vasecto, and he's like an evil doctor with all these sharp tools that he attack you with. And if you make it to the end, it's a pretty long, difficult game. But if you make it to the end, then you, there's a special cutscene in there of Tom having lots of babies or the babies disappearing. <laughs> I don't know exactly, exactly what happened. <laughs> <laughs> I've never beaten it. It is pretty hard, but now I really want to. I, I now that I know that I was judging when I played it at the time because I was, you know, I created Pixel Day and I was one of the judges. So I was like, okay, I'll I'll try not to play a game for too long. But I think some years I ended up playing a game like like that for an hour, and I was just so hooked. And I'm like, oh wait, I got hours of stuff to judge. I can't be here too long, so I would have to. But but I've been wanting to come back to that. Now I really want to beat the game. Oh, that's that's so funny. Yeah, April Fulp also makes an appearance. Oh, and you really really need to beat it because the very oh, end God. there's an outtake from tom's recording session where he recorded the voices where he just goes crazy <laughs> really uh yeah it's an it's like an audio outtake at the very very end of the game <laughs> <laughs> that will kill you if you if you listen to i it. really wanted to, i really want to see that i really want to hear that so i guess we're advertising the game so anyone who wants to see that go play the super gonad smasher <laughs> well bl we link everything below oh man I'm, I'm crying um anyway um i really you know i i really love your games like i was saying though especially for pixel day like you know that's where that came from uh that was one of my favorite entries because i always look forward to your entries every year that you can submit i know it's kind of hard like you said you have a lot to do I wish I could make a game with you guys because I'm I'm also working on a game that uh, I'll talk about when it's not too early. But um, coming to another question, Bomb Tunes and Pesto Force. So you were talking about that. I noticed because on Pesto Force, you have some some big titles under that as well, like Super Chibi Night and uh, Abobo's Big Adventure. So which one of those did you want to talk about? I don't know. What do you 
what are you guys interested in hearing about? I can I can talk about Abobo's big big adventure for a long time because that was it's the biggest project that I've ever worked on in my life. Super Chibi Night was a close second, um, but it's probably not as interesting to the Newgrounds community. Like it didn't it wasn't like the style is not quite as Newgrounds as uh, Bubbles Big Adventure. Actually, I have a question about that for you. Do you uh, do you find that people that love a Bobo's Big Adventure is like the older crowd like us that grew up with those games or is it kind of like an even mix of um, all sorts of ages? Um, it definitely resonates big time with our generation um, like the 80s, 90s mm-hmm. kids. Like it's uh, like especially w- when we were showing it off at Comic Con like we built an arcade cabinet before we released the game and we're like showing demo versions of it at Comic Con in Roger's booth, mm-hmm. uh, the iMockery booth. It, yeah. would, it would just there would be a huge crowd of like our same age people just gathered around just loving it, laughing at it. Yeah, because it is like a weird character to focus a whole game on. <laughs> yeah, and, and what's weird is like people people were aware of him in their subconscious that there's this, oh yeah, recognition when they see yeah. him. But, you know, that's one of the reasons Roger chose him is like he's the most unsung, like cool character of like retro gaming. Um, but I have seen recently like there is a, a big following of newer gen kids who are into retro games, you know, but it's like a different attitude uh, mm-hmm. about them. And so they appreciate it too. But yeah. A Bobo's Big Adventure, like now, after it's been a few years uh, since it came out, uh, looking back on it, it made such an impact out there, like in the real world. Like it got an article in Game Informer magazine. I Yeah. Uh, my wife, she was in our garage when our UPS man was dropping off a package and my garage has the a Bobo's cabinet in it. The UPS guy was like, hey, I play that game. That's one of my favorite games. He's like, how did you get a cabinet of it? And she was like, oh, my husband made it. And he was like, no way. <laughs> He was like freaked out. And so like every time he came back after that, he was, uh, Hey, I'm delivering your mail. Can you deliver me an autograph? <laughs> yeah. He was, he was like, is your husband home? Is your husband home? i um, just like trying to like, and he just and- gets your signature and then he uses, he's like, Oh wait, I need to cut this out. This is his signature, his autograph. <laughs> then he like copies the paper with the signature for the package and he just puts it on his wall. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that was crazy to what me. What a and scam. Then, yeah. <laughs> It was crazy to me also. I was I went back to college to take to like finish my degree and I was sitting next to a kid who while the, the professor was lecturing, he was playing video games <laughs> like on his laptop with a controller and he was playing games on Steam and I was like, Hey, what are you playing? And eventually like told him, Oh yeah, I made I've made some games. He's like, What games? And I was like, Oh, well big big adventure. And he's like, What? Are you kidding me? And then <laughs> then he he like followed me out to my car after class, like he would not leave me alone. And that kind of like like I've never you know making games or whatever it i've never met people in real life randomly that recognized something that i made and so i feel like a bubble's big adventure was just like a different level of like oh, success yeah. with making games and i feel kind of bad because i wish that like we had made something that we could have actually charged money for <laughs> um rather but you than didn't. It, yeah and so it's like how do i get that kind of uh success and like not have it be just a labor of love you know mm-hmm. how can i like yeah. make a make that into some sort of thing that I can live on and give me more time to make more stuff. Like how do I capture lightning in a jar again? Uh, we just, like we just need more Tom Fulp life moments. Yeah. Tell Tom <laughs> to, to live a more interesting life to inspire. Come some on games. Tom. We, we need new content. <laughs> Yeah, people in the ch- in the chat are like saying monetize. Like, yeah, that's one of the things I'm worst at is just figuring out how to make money off of my creations. It's like I just tend to not be good at thinking that way. Well, understandable. I think it's really awesome that you guys did that, and it's really generous. But also, I wanted to say, as I did, I love that game as much as anyone. But I also really, I played a, quite a few hours of uh, the original Chibi Night and then Super Chibi Night that came out on Steam. Um, and I do think more people should play it, even though it's not like the longest game in the world i do think it has some cool mechanics and it does kind of stand out on its own and i think it's really sweet the story behind it because it involves you and your daughter what can you tell us about that yeah so the story is the original chibi night well it's actually a long story that ties back into castle crash and the beard so the actually yeah it kind of has that style to it yeah yeah like that platforming with the sword beat him up crossed with platforming and that actually all goes back even further than castle crashing the beard like this is like genetics of games that i've made <laughs> the the first germ of that idea was in a game called boss bash which actually oh yeah i remember that like you'll remember this lewis um you remember the flash reg lounge yeah yeah it's still there oh it's still there uh yeah i mean what's what used to be there yeah not quite as active but nothing gets deleted on Newgrounds. But back in the day, there was a 
a BBS forum where it was called the Flash Reg Lounge, where if you were a regular contributor to Newgrounds, you would like hang out here and talk about what you were working on. And uh, there was somebody who was like, let's do a collaboration with all the f- Flash Regs. And I don't know if you remember this, Lewis, but the collaboration was to remake a boss battle uh, from your favorite game. Do you remember that? Mm, no, I might have been drunk. <laughs> <It's> true. <laughs> <laughs> The early 2000s. Maybe he doesn't want to remember it. They're they're all a blur. (laughs) The early 2000s for Lewis. Um, Yeah. yeah, So the so it was the idea you would take like a 3D game, like a modern game, and then you'd convert it to like work in Flash, and you'd remake it. Um, And a bunch of people were working on it on different boss battles. Um, I think one of them was like Kraid from Metroid. Nice. There's a a bunch of other ones people were working on, and I worked on a couple of them. But then the the collab never ended up coalescing into anything like people never finish their projects this this sound familiar <laughs> to anybody <Yeah. laughs> Classic. Uh, so i but i finished mine i and i made two entries for it i made a uh, wart from super mario brothers 2 and i made thunderbird from zelda 2 and yeah. i was like crap i did all this work and now the collab isn't happening and so i was like well i'm just gonna do this on my own so then i added a bobo from uh double dragon as one of the boss battles and so i released boss bash which was like three boss battles in one game yeah. um, each with a different genre you would get like depending on your score you'd get like a one two or three star rating and um so that the uh, zelda boss from that was like you know zelda 2 platforming uh beat em up slash em up kind of game and uh from there i was like oh i should so people played it and they were like you should like turn this into a bigger game like this is really fun so then i was like okay but i should like make up my own ip so i did uh chibi night because like new grounds um the madness guys who have like floating hands or whatever yeah um that was like a thing at the time and i think i was also working on woogie world which is like a kids multiplayer game that i uh was like my day job oh like the kind of uh they were like gumdrop shape characters with floating hands that's like the basis of woogie world so i was the <laughs> the main artist all the ui stuff for woogie world oh nice and so i made i made chibi night as like hey maybe this could help woogie world advertise woogie world and it also like integrates this this genre of like platforming with slash them up and so that's the the genesis of chibi night and while i was working on chibi night i was doing sound it was the game was totally done and i was doing sound and i was actually recording my own voice for the night I was like trying to make like grunts and like hi and like yeah yeah or whatever like to overlay as sounds and my daughter who was three years old at the time she was like laughing at me while I was recording <laughs> and I was like oh you think that's funny uh, why don't you come over here and you know record why, why don't you try it and so then she did and I and so I was like let's listen let's put your voice in there and see how it sounds and then it was just so perfect with the little teeny tiny squished night artwork yeah. to hear her voice with it. And I was like, holy crap, Aww. this is this is like perfect. Let's have you do the full set of sounds. <laughs> um, and yeah, it was just, it all came together. And so then when I finally got around to finishing Super TV Night, she was eight years old by that time. So this is like five years later, but her voice was still cute enough. She went ahead and did all the, all the voices. Are you first. saying it's not anymore? Yeah, it's not anymore. <laughs> it's all great. <laughs> It's all grown up. <laughs> it's like down the road, you come out with like a, a third entry and, and then she's like old, uh, older and she's like, what if my voice not cute enough? Are you replacing me, dad? Oh, I'm yeah. leaving. Or it'll be like geriatric night when she's like retired. <laughs> 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 yeah. So the only, only other thing I wanted to mention is I do have two younger, actually I have three younger boys now. Oh, wow. Who uh, we have been talking about doing a sequel to Super Chibi Night called Ultra chibi night nice nice and if you've ever beaten super chibi night at the end you see that there's like another child that comes in and picks up the helmet yeah so that and the voice that i recorded for that was my my son at the time so there may be a sequel Aww. using the the next generation of voices for ultra chibi night <laughs> that's awesome you know again you're stable awesome. gotta, voice gotta be time. <laughs> yeah <laughs> my sweatshop yeah uh, you said it i didn't <laughs> <laughs> free voice actors i can avoid child labor laws <laughs> so a portion of a portion of the proceeds from super chibi night did go to my daughter's college fund so just uh, oh, it's, a, it's on that's... the up and up <laughs> good parenting good parenting no that's really great though i i really respect that so I, back... I love that story so back to lewis's alcoholism <laughs> <laughs> <God>. <laughs> 
Well, I do have a question for Lewis. It's a small string of questions, so we can kind of rapid fire through these. But okay. um, you're a businessman who travels the world, and sometimes you share these awesome views, these pictures of wherever you're at in the world sometimes in your news posts. Um, so the first couple of questions I'll ask, I kind of string together is what is your businessman origin story? What it made you, uh, a businessman? What do you do as a businessman and what, what brings you around the world? Um, well, I'm a web designer. That's what pays the bills, I guess. Um, and I just like to wander to random places. Um, partly it's partly inspired by the, the meetup stuff. Like that sort of like made me come out of my shell in terms of like not being scared to talk to strangers or what have you. So nowadays I just like when I was in uh, Newfoundland, and uh, back in February, it was just uh, flying back from Europe. I saw that there was St. John's that I flew over every time I came back. And um, I was like, I'm going to go there one day. And then I went there last month. <laughs> Oh, great. So, like, my travels are very, like, spontaneous and, like, they don't make sense, but I kind of like it that way. I just need to get out of the house. Let's go to Europe. <laughs> yeah, some, some trips are better that, than others. I love but, traveling. Yeah, it's uh, it's fun, but, I mean, it, when you're, like, on sitting on a plane for eight hours, you start to think, like, what am I actually doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, it, it's fun. So, yeah, I mean, I love traveling. I love going to Philadelphia. That's one of my favorite places. And I'm really excited to go again this year. But I wish I could tra- I wish I could travel more. But coming to the next question, what are a few of your favorite places around the world? Well, actually, I did actually enjoy going to Newfoundland. It was it was very cold. Um, and everyone there was like, what are you doing here? Like, who comes here during the winter? <laughs> Uh, but everybody was really friendly, and I did like like the the small town aspect of it, uh, which is a bit different than a lot of the places that I've been to, which are like larger cities. It was good. I think that's currently that's probably my favorite place that I've been to in the last couple of years. Cool. There's other places that I also did enjoy, like Poland was great. Yeah. I don't think I have any places that I actually hated or or not had a good time. Well, that's good because, you know, some people have these uh, horrible travel stories. They're like, I'm never going back there again. Um, Yeah, I think the coronavirus right now is kind of like a weird like I'm definitely not going to travel as much as I usually do. uh, Just until that blows over. But um, I mean, I'm not going to just stay at home either. Yeah, it's affecting it's affecting a lot this year. Like E3 is apparently potentially not going to happen this year. That's you know, if you want a little piece of news that kind of ties into that uh, new grounds, you know, that's something that's a thing right now that just got announced uh, recently. Yeah, it's getting uh, kind of bad. Yeah, some cancel some concerts and tours are canceled, and and I'm glad they are because in the past there were some epidemics or, well, I don't know if I want to say epidemics, pandemics, whatever you call it, widespread viruses, and people would be like, no, let's still do the events, but I'm kind of glad they're cracking down on this for people's safety so that it doesn't uh, doesn't spread. Yeah, I'm curious if uh, Comic-Con's going to happen this year. Yeah, that's that's another thing I was going to wonder about is uh, that's like E3, a giant Comic-Con. One the amount of people that go there. Oh, yeah. I, I think they're probably monitoring it as well. Now, uh... I have one last question for Bomb Tunes, and then we can go to the audience questions. Well, a couple of questions. Well, they're they're tied together. So you have some of the longest and most informational news posts that I've seen on Newgrounds. Uh, you have <laughs> <laughs> they're like really a long read, but they're really cool. It's like um, it's kind of like a Rogers Eye Mockery site or the uh, Ox Boxes site. I think what, what or I think what it was. I believe it's like these long reads with articles, but they're, they're very informational, interesting posts. I have noticed you have a knack for recommending books and you you really love to educate people, especially about uh, psychology. And I love psychology, by the way, um, being very open about your life. So when did that come about and, uh, and why, like what made you first want to do that? One thing that I'm really grateful for to Newgrounds, which is kind of a weird, like not necessarily the core purpose of Newgrounds is it's been a place where I could catalog my life. You know, it's like been my personal journal, my diary <laughs> over time. And it's really cool to me to be able to go back like 10 That's years crazy. and remember stuff that was going on in my life. And with pretty good detail, like the documentation quality is pretty, is something I really enjoy. And I'm glad that Newgrounds has provided that service you know, where I can document all this stuff that's been going on, the games I'm making, creative efforts, kids that have been born, um, uh, ups and downs, struggles, victories, you know, <laughs> all that stuff is all like my life is there for the last 10, 15 years on Newgrounds. And so I've just kind of, I've just doubled down on that. I've had like a kind of rough past, I don't know, two or three years going through some hard things with my family. 
and um, like learning a lot about myself and uh, some Absolutely. of my personal shortcomings and things that I've had to work on to try to improve the relationships in my life, uh, which is a lot of like personal work. And that um, has made me want to like one of the things I've come to value the most is vulnerability, really being real and not having like a facade or a mask that I'm showing to the world. And I feel like the internet is uh, particularly suited to presenting a mask to the world. Sorry if I'm getting philosophical here, but, um, and so I've been trying to be more aware of presenting my real self, like warts and all, like, uh, because I, in the past, I've tended to only share the positives on the internet and which I think is does a disservice to people. It makes people think that when they think of other people's lives, that their lives are good and my life is bad. And that can like make you feel less than, make you feel like your life sucks and everyone else has a good except you and kind of drive a depressive spirit about the world and especially about your own life. Uh, I mean, you yeah. look at Lewis posting all these trips to, all around the world and you're like, man, I wish I could do that. I wish I could afford that. He looks like he's having so much fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why, why don't why don't I make enough money to do that or you know why whatever and so I I think I find it refreshing when people are kind of open the kimono and let people look into the the crap that goes on in their life as well as the the good and to understand that that is what life is is a pretty healthy mixture of both and that's and that there's beauty there's beauty in both um, there's beauty in the in the hard times and there's beauty in the good times and like to the more, some of the best experiences I've had are when people have really opened up about that and been real. So I'm trying to be more aware of, of doing that uh, in what I post. So I posted stuff, stuff in there about addictions and overcoming addiction and like my sobriety time and things like that. So it's, you know, my journey, what I've like psychologically, I've had to do a lot of work and think about things that are hard to think about, things that are difficult to overcome and deal with. And how and, and not that I'm great at it, but I'm on a journey and so I'm sharing that and I'm I'm hoping that, you know, somebody who's reading it, it'll resonate with them and help them, you know, understand that yeah, life life can seem depressing when all you see are other people's like uh, Yeah, that makes the, sense. We we have a tendency to compare our worst with everyone else's best. Um and that's like if you can see that other people have their own worst, you can have a better uh, view on reality. So, Lewis, in your, your very first news post on Newgrounds, you said that you were going to be posting, and I quote, emo things. And so what I'm saying <laughs> is you should, uh, you should go back to that. Start, start posting some more depressing <laughs> things so that, we can all, <laughs> so that we can all feel better about comparing ourselves to you. <laughs> Oh, that was uh that was cool to hear uh like Nick's uh thoughts on like posting and stuff like that. It, I think it's it's valid for sure. Um I think one thing that I do like to mention whenever I do meet people is is that like Nick said, like like stuff that I post is just like the highlight reel. So I mean it it might look like all I do is travel, but um, you know, there's boring Tuesdays oh, yeah. where I just work all day and And then the rest of I, the week you're in Europe. I hate my life. <laughs> Yeah, and then the rest of the week I'm in Europe. <laughs> Damn Tuesday. No, but it's definitely like a different style. Honestly, I think we we need boring days. We need boring days though, because if everything was a like if you were just high energy all the time, that would wear you out. Like I need my downtime for sure. So it's I think it's good to have a boring day. No, absolutely. Uh, even when I used to do like the meetups and stuff, as much as I did like meeting people, you come to a point where you're just like worn out, and you're just like, all right, I can't talk to a person for the, another four days or whatever so i'll like i'd like come back to like the new yeah. office and i didn't want to talk to anybody <laughs> tom's like so how's your trip i was like I I talk to shut up tom <laughs> i don't want to talk about it and now we know why lewis was fired <laughs> um so real quick i wanted to build uh before we get into the audience questions i wanted to say that um what you guys are saying especially um Nick and in, in your post, um, that's I love that because that's something I try to do. Um, whenever I try to post, like you, you keep it transparent, you keep it real. I mean, I'm I'm called real faction for you know a reason. When I came up with like when I was 14, I want to keep it real, you know. So I wholeheartedly believe in that because I also do that to help people, thinking that who, whoever is reading it, it may help them, and that's kind of why I started an advice podcast um, and stuff like that. So I'm I honestly really respect that. I appreciate that. 
we will take some audience questions, but we're going to do them super rapid fire. We've already got them in show submissions. So, okay, first up, Lewis, how big are your feet? How big are my feet? <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, how big are your feet? <laughs> they're, I'm a size 10, I guess. Very cool. Very good and very cool. I, I don't know how that translates <laughs> to women's sizes, though. So, King Salmon asked how you came up with Bobo's Big Adventure, but we have kind of already talked about that. Um, yeah, but favorite game that he ever made? Uh... I love them all so much. They're like my children. They all have their own unique quality. I, I think a Bobo's Big Adventure for sure is like, it's kind of my magnum opus so far. Um, it's it's the thing where I'm like, if, if cool. I could somehow recapture that in the future, I would I would be happy. I'm sure you will. So uh, ask Lewis about Darnell breakdancing pixel art. How do you, how do, you do it? How does that happen? That one uh, was weird because I usually don't make something that long, but I like watching. Did you take a year yeah, on that? On. Um, like when I'm at work, I, I like having videos just playing on my other, on my other monitor. I actually got that habit from the, the Newgrounds days when Stamper and, uh, and Mind Chamber would do that. Like it just kind of like is like better noise for me than hearing a song or something. So I'll have like breakdancing video and I don't breakdance by any means, but, um, I just like, uh, playing random videos on, on my other screen. And, um, and then I just like the, the challenge of breakdancing and like, the human body moving in certain ways and uh i like the challenge of trying to figure out how to translate that into animation and so that's pretty much how that that darnell thing came up came up i don't know what this one means but i assume that you will so lewis how well do you think goggles are sexy lewis holds up to this day <laughs> i i don't know um i do remember it but i'm i'd like to forget it <laughs> 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 uh, and then Henry Eyes wants to know how much time you've spent in England. I used to go there almost every year. Uh, I've stopped going there. It's probably been about seven, eight years since I've been back to England. Um, it's fun, but it's just expensive to go. So I choose to go other places now. Not that I hate England. It's just um, more of a cost issue, I guess. Oh, I have a I have a better answer for the previous question. So one of my favorite games that I think is most underrated or underappreciated concept wise um, is one that me and Lewis worked on together. Um, it's called Madness Premeditation. I just think the idea of that game has so much potential. You remember that game, Lewis? Yeah, yeah. Um, it was a very unique it, concept we didn't, to it. Yeah, I don't I don't know that we pulled it off especially well just because we made you know turned it out so fast but mm -hmm. the idea behind it of like taking a level and planning out your moves at your leisure and then having a layer uh, on top of that like where you're executing moves along a timeline like it's such a cool idea we had so many unique challenges in how to present the the user interface for that game that were like i f i feel they were very like novel uh, approaches to that like have never been done before in a video game yes and so that's one of the especially things. like boss fights like how do you make a boss fight out of a, a, an engine like that you know and it was it was fun yeah it's really cool and that's an idea i wish we had funding or something to go spend a lot of time like fleshing it out to its full potential but yeah that's that's a lesser known gem i think that like if you guys haven't played it you should check it out um i think what is yeah, that? I think, That's uh, about I think it. We'll wrap it up there, unless either of you have any last last things you'd like to say to the world of Newgrounds before we depart. I'll see you guys on Newgrounds, I guess. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Nick. Yeah, I I am just grateful to Tom Fulp for sticking it through the hard times on Newgrounds and being dedicated to it. Like he could have easily canceled Newgrounds, you know, pulled it down or whatever during the hard times. Like I believe he's. This is what I've heard is that he's you know dumped some of quite a bit of his own money into keeping it up over the years mm -hmm. and uh oh yeah and that's really cool because there's he's doing a huge service like what's archived on Newgrounds, like the history that's there just the like cultural value of what Newgrounds is is hugely uh important i think absolutely and i wish more people yeah. i wish more people were uh, aware of it and supportive of keeping this up and running and and the future of Newgrounds, I think, is uh, potentially bright. Like, I think the subscription model that Tom is on is uh, that he's adopted lately is is the way to go. And like, I I hope that it can regain some of its former glory because it used to, it, it, and it's on its way. Like, it's reapproaching those those days. Um, like the the usership is up quite a bit. There was like a lull there for a while that had me worried. But I look forward to the day when like Newgrounds is as hopping as it was in early 2000s and when like tom Fulp has so much vision and dedication he has great ideas for improving the internet and if he can just get the the funding that he needs behind him he's going to make great things happen so 
So I, I'm excited to be a part of the community. There's no other website I've ever been a member of that I love as much as Newgrounds, you know, where I would, I, I do almost anything to help support Newgrounds. And uh, <laughs> I don't know what that means, but don't ask me necessarily to do anything, but yeah. <laughs> Well, definitely. And when Nightmare Cops comes out, I honestly think there's going to be a huge boost. Tom was talking about how that game's probably, and I believe it, uh, is going to be, you know, just like Castle Crashers did, launch new grounds uh, on the map, but also really help with the funding. So I'm really excited for whenever that game comes out. But honestly, one last thing. Will, do you have anything else uh, that you want to add? We need to ask Will. Uh, no, I think that'll be it. Um, well, uh, Goodell, do you have anything you want to add? I just want to say thank you so much, Lewis, and, and Pesto4 slash BombTunes for being on the show. Really appreciate y'all being here. Sorry for the connection issues and all the technical difficulties we experienced along the way, but it'll be a good episode, and I really appreciate both of you. Yeah, thanks for having us. And also, yeah. thank you to all the, you all the live audience. This was a really good turnout for this episode, so thanks, everybody, for being here, and uh, we'll see y'all next time. Thank you for listening to the New Grounds Podcast. This show is recorded live on our Discord server. Join us at bit.ly slash NGP Discord. For the latest news, follow us on Twitter at the NG Podcast. Thank you to Waterflame for the use of the song Gabberfly. Long live Newgrounds.